Hello everyone and welcome back to Hannah's Happy Home. In today's video we are going to be working on some house projects and some landscaping at our home. So I hope you enjoyed this video just coming along on three different days with us. So on this first day we are at Lowe's in the garden center just picking out some plants for the front flower bed and also supplies for a DIY planter box and a trellis that we're going to make. The garden center was full of so many beautiful flowers and plants and greenery, just made me really happy to walk down through these aisles. But it always takes me a while to pick out landscaping because sometimes it can just feel overwhelming to know what to get and to just know what is going to grow well in our area. But we did end up picking out quite a few beautiful plants and vines. I'll show those to you here in a little bit. Okay, so it's the next morning and this morning we are going to work on that DIY planter box and trellis. So out here beside the carport in between the office door and the back door in that carport is this little wooden planter box with the wooden trellis that Jalen had built, I think it was about two years ago. The bougainvillea vine that we had planted in this planter box died after the first frost that winter. Something that I didn't realize that I learned is that bougainvillea cannot survive frost. And it does get really hot where we live here in southern Arizona, but we do get frost in the winter time. It always gets below freezing. So we have to have plants that can survive our hot summers and the desert climate, but also be able to withstand frost. So we're going to be planting new vines and also building a new planter box and adding a metal trellis. So first off, this planter box was built out of really thin boards and it was also just a little bit too small. It was starting to come apart Part, and as you'll see when we remove it the bottom of it was just like rotting and stuck to the pavers underneath so Jalen wanted to build a new larger planter box out of two by fours that would be sturdy he wanted to build it with wood screws instead of just little nails from the nail gun that way this will be able to withstand the weather it's going to hold up a lot better and he did such an awesome job on this planter box it turned out amazing is such a sturdy, good quality planter box. And we thought about just buying a wooden planter box at Lowe's, but not only were they expensive, but they were also really flimsy. They just wouldn't have held up. And it's a lot cheaper to just buy a couple of two by fours, build your own planter box that is going to be sturdy and that will hold up to weather and everything through the years. So the two by fours were $3 and about 60 cents a piece. And he bought six two by fours to make this planter box. So the total price for this planter box came to $21 and about 60 cents. As you can see, he's building this planter box four two by fours high. So he's building each of those frames and just making four of them and then is going to attach all four of the frames together with some smaller pieces of wood in the corners. And the total size of this planter box was about four foot long and 18 inches wide. And once that planter box was pieced together, I did just go ahead and stain that. Well, first Jalen sanded the entire thing with the electric sander, and then I stained it with the stain color special walnut. Once that stain color was completely dry, then I applied a sealer to the entire piece, and this is an exterior sealer. It will last up to three years and will last through rain and heat and sun and all of that. It's just a really good product. It does go on kind of looking like glue, but it will dry completely clear. Okay. 
Okay, so while that is drying, we are going to remove the old planter box and we'll keep this box on hand as scrap wood. I'm sure we can use the wood for some project in the future. And we are just putting that soil into a wheelbarrow. That way we can reuse it for the next box. And once we remove this, you'll see me pulling off that thin piece of plywood that we had used for the base of this old planter box. It was stuck to the pavers and was just rotted down there. So for this new planter box, we are not going to be putting a base on it and just going to set it right on top of the pavers and do a thin layer of gravel on the bottom and then layer our soil on top of that. So now Jalen is spray painting this fence panel black and this is going to be our trellis. Originally we were just going to use like a black iron fence panel. I'll put the picture up here on the screen of my inspiration picture from Pinterest where I got the idea. But these fence panels were over $100 and we didn't want to spend that much on this project. We were trying to keep it on a budget. So we found this fence panel at Tractor Supply and it was only $24. It's eight foot by 50 inches, and we just spray painted that black, hung it up on the wall with some hooks. He did some concrete screws and anchors into the wall for those hooks, and these hooks are just like a dollar at Lowe's, and then we just spray painted them black and hung that fence panel directly onto the hooks, planted the vines, and I'm training the vines to go up this fence panel. I tied a couple of them around the panel and then also just wrapped a few as well. But I think this turned out really cute and the total price for this project was right around $50. That doesn't include the vines, but it still saved us a lot of money. The only downside is that because this fence panel is for a pasture, those two holes there on the right side are a little bit smaller. And we were going to try and grind that side off a little bit just so that everything was even. But I'm just going to train a large section of the vine to go up this right side and it should be covering most of that right side by the end of the summer. And you don't even hardly notice it in real life so we're just not going to worry about it. Okay, so this first project is complete and now we're going to work on some painting. Jalen was going ahead and getting started on that over there. So the trim around the door to my office was needing to be painted and we we're just painting that the same color as the office door and the other doors and the trim and everything on the exterior of our house. That is a custom dark gray color that matches the metal fascia on the exterior of our house. So we're going to paint that trim. And then there was also some touch up paint we had to do up there at the ceiling from when this room was completely renovated. And also the contractor was coming the next day to fix this stucco around the door. And also another contractor was coming the next day to work on the inside of the house and to just finish up the drywall work in the dining room. So a lot happening over these couple of days, but we're excited to be getting things done. And we were hoping to get the trim painted in the office this week, but that just didn't happen. So hopefully we can do that next week. Now I'm going to clean up the front of our barn a little bit. So as you can see, there was some piles of dirt and leaves and pine needles and everything. It just needed a good sweep. And then I was gonna get the blower and blow off the front of the barn and the concrete. Also wanted to sweep down the cobwebs that were around the top of the barn and the doors. And then also get a new plant planted in this little black planter here. This barn was a huge transformation. If you never saw that video about two years ago, I will link it down below. We completely transformed this little storage shed into a barn. 
with these DIY sliding barn doors and with some new wood and paint. And it was a huge, huge job, but was definitely worth the work. It turned out so cute. And this little light on the front is actually a solar light. So as you can see, the little solar panel is up there on the roof and this light has held up really well. Still works awesome after two years and I just love seeing it shining out here in the evening. Okay, so this is looking a bit cleaner now and refreshed for spring. Eventually, I'm going to have to repaint that planter box, probably do a quick recoat of stain on the doors and sealer, but I probably won't worry about that until this fall. I wanted to walk you over and show you my garden really quickly. If you missed at the end of my whole house cleaning video, we put together these metal planter boxes and planted some seeds in here. I've got carrots and red beets, green beans, and cucumbers that are hopefully going to be growing in these metal raised beds. Now I'm on the back porch going to replant some flowers in these white pots. A little over a month ago, I had planted flowers in these pots and you guys saw that in a video, but then it randomly got cold again and it froze at night. I didn't know it was going to freeze or else I would have brought these pots inside, but those flowers died having to plant some new ones in here and it's definitely not going to freeze again. It's getting in the 80s every day for the last couple of weeks. So it is officially starting to feel like summertime. Going to take the boys out on a little trail ride they have their little quad and their little dirt bike so we headed out and went exploring for a little bit but first they wanted to show me their hideout they had been working on so after they showed me that then we headed out on the trails but we didn't ride for too long because it was starting to get really windy but this is something I love doing with them, just going out and exploring on trail rides. It's really fun to have all of these trails behind our house or walking out with them to see their fort, jumping on the trampoline for a bit, just taking the time during the day to stop the work I'm doing, even if it's just for a few minutes to do something with them. Okay, so I'm back inside. Jalen had been inside getting some work done and hanging out with the baby and I wanted to get our sheets put in the washer, get those started for the day. This is the day that I usually like to wash the bedding. So got those thrown in the washer and now I need to get a little bit of cleaning done. Wanted to get the kitchen cleaned up. I also had some cookie dough chilling in the fridge. So going to pop that in the oven because Owen had been asking for cookies the last two days. So I wanted to get these baked for the boys. And I think I had said earlier that the contractor was coming the next day to work on the drywall in the dining room, but he actually came on this day and then also the next day as well. So he was at the house working on that throughout the day. There you got to see a little sneak peek of what that's looking like. Once that's completed, then we can go ahead and get started on working on those sliding barn doors that will go on either side of this opening.
it is now the next morning and this morning we are going to work on the front landscaping so starting off these finger looking succulents had died over the winter they had done great the last two years and then they just died over this last winter not sure what happened but going to be pulling those out and then our cactus has been growing like crazy and it also is growing two baby cactuses out the side so we're going to remove those and plant them in a different spot and try to get this cactus this larger cactus pushed up straight because the smaller ones were causing it to grow sideways and then these three dead bushes were bougainvillea bushes like i said at the beginning of the video that bougainvillea vine did not survive the frost and these bougainvillea bushes did not survive either we never got around to replacing these dead bushes last spring so we wanted to get this done this spring and just give the front of the house a bit of a refresh i found these little sweet broom bushes at home depot these are so pretty and it says that they do really well in hot dry weather which is awesome for our area Jalen does have an underground watering system for this front landscaping. He installed that back two years ago when we had this curb installed and we added the gravel and the plants out front. So that little hose is going underground to each of the plants and it's set up on a timer to run every day. So we are going to remove this first dead bush here and replace it with this plant that I got from Lowe's. This plant should do really well here. It should get quite large and it will get a few pink flowers on the top. You can see it's already starting to get a pink flower over on that right side. And to replace the other two dead bushes, I want to get two Texas sage bushes to plant there. Those bushes down there on the end, I've got two of them growing together in between the Ocotillas and those are Texas sage. Texas sage grows really well here in southern Arizona and that is what we have lining our back porch all of those beautiful big bushes those are Texas sage they've grown really well the last year and we went into Lowe's and also Home Depot and neither of those stores had any Texas sage in stock she said that's her most asked question right now is where is the Texas sage bushes because they do really well in the area and so a lot of people plant them. So hopefully they get more back in stock soon. That way I can replace the other two dead bushes at the front. Um, but that is all that we got done out there. Later on Jalen is going to plant another Ocotilla that we got over on the other side of the house. But for now I'm just going to clean up a little bit and then we will get to that a little later. I was using the Dewalt blower to clean up this front area a little bit, try to get some of those leaves and little sticks and things out of the gravel. And we started working on this landscaping pretty early in the morning while the kids were still sleeping. So they had just woken up. So I was trying to wrap things up. That way I could go and get them some breakfast. But here is how the front landscaping is looking minus the two Texas sage bushes that hopefully I can add here in a couple of weeks. Um, but now we are going to head over to the other side of the front of the house and Jalen is going to plant that Ocotilla. We had a vine growing here. I'm pretty sure it was a bougainvillea vine and it had died as well. So we were needing to replace that for a while. Um, so we just put an Ocotilla here. They do really well in the desert. 
They don't need much water. This should thrive here. We just wanted something really tall. So this is perfect for the spot. They get green in the summer and then some pink flowers on top. That is where I'm going to end today's video. I hope that you enjoyed coming along on these three different days with us as we worked on some things, just took you along on our day and did a few house projects. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you next week on Tuesday with new video. Bye.